the theory of special relativity. Special relativity was a theory that was developed by Einstein, a very well-known known physicist, not at the time, but now is a household name, in 1905. And this theory was extremely important because it fundamentally changed our understanding of the structure and the nature of space and time, and specifically how different observers in different frames of reference would perceive space and time. Now before this, we had the Newtonian view in which space and time are absolutes everyone would agree on on what time is and everyone would agree on what space is and you know how fast everyone's if everyone has a watch then all of their times would run exactly the same and space and time are kind of just a fixed background on which we all move around and interact on so so space and time are absolutes whereas in special relativity the view is very different, where space and time are not absolutes, but are relative to which observers are which observers you're considering. And when we say special relativity, uh, the reason that we use this special is because we want to talk about inertial inertial observers, uh, observers that aren't accelerating and. You, you may guess that when we talk about general relativity, it, it generalizes this assumption right here. And this change in ideas from space and time being absolutes to, to relative leads to a lot of very seemingly strange uh, phenomenon that happened. Uh, you've probably heard of time dilation and length contraction and all of these weird effects. But before getting into those weird effects, I just kind of want to talk a little bit about the background and some of the physics that was going on at the time that led Einstein to develop this theory. So in the 1860s, uh, Maxwell developed his developed uh, what are now known as Maxwell's equations that describe uh, that describe electromagnetism and electromagnetic waves. And in these equations, it led him to a value for the speed of light. And that speed of light is always denoted by C. I'll write that in yellow. And this value is, uh, is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So it's an incredibly fast speed. And in these equations, it says electromagnetic waves propagate at a certain speed, and the speed is this. But that led to kind of a question because the equations didn't give any hint of what is, what is that speed being measured relative to. Uh, in the frame of reference video, you, you, we saw how different observers might disagree on how fast an object is moving depending on their perspective. So we have to ask, what is this speed relative to? And that led to the, uh, to the idea of a lot of physicists to the idea of the, what's called the ether, that even in empty space, there's some background material, some, some strange, uh, uh, medium that allows light to propagate through. So in the same way that sound waves need the air to propagate, uh, water waves need uh, a body of water in order for the waves to propagate, light needs this ether. And maybe this speed is the speed relative to that ether. But experiments were done saying, all right, let's say here's the sun, here's the sun, and the Earth is orbiting around the Sun. And as it orbits around the Sun, it should be moving in this ether. And I'm going to measure the speed of light at different points around, when I'm at different points around the Sun, and if I'm 
moving with the ether, uh, I should see the speed of light being different than if I move against the ether. But we, but experiments were done, and there was no no change in the speed of light. So that really uh, brought into question whether this whether this ether exists, and this ether could have been considered. Newton's idea of what an absolute space and absolute time could be. It, it could be the background, the preferred background for everything that happens in the universe. But experiment didn't really show any evidence of this existing. Another uh, phenomenon that was, uh, that was being studied, um, let's say we have a flashlight and it is going to be emitting light. And that light moves at the speed C. Well, we could have another flashlight and say what happens to the speed of light if that flashlight is moving forward at a velocity V. So you might think that, well, if the flashlight's moving forward, then maybe the velocity of this light will should be C plus V. And is that actually going to be true? Well, uh, there's an experiment that you can do to actually test this, and, and this was tested by using the moons of Jupiter. So say this is Jupiter, and this is the Earth, and we are going to put a moon over here, and that moon is orbiting around Jupiter, and we are looking at the light from that moon. So at some points, the moon is going to be moving towards the Earth. So we would expect that if it's moving towards and the light gets shot out, we would expect the speed of light from that moon to be going faster. And we can isolate the light just from Jupiter's moon and measure how fast it's going. On the other hand, when the moon's going away from the Earth, and we measure the light that's uh, that's coming from that moon and, and reaching Earth, we would expect that speed of light to be slower. But again, we come up uh, that there is no no difference in the speed of light from those two from those two objects. So that seems kind of strange as well, and and again puts into this into question that this is uh, not going to be true. So we've eliminated our ether idea and this idea that the speed of light changes, uh, the speed of light is going to be different from an object that's moving. So Einstein took this and said, I'm going to develop a new theory and it's going to be based on two postulates. The first postulate is that there is no, no preferred reference frame. So if I'm moving inertially, then there is no experiment that I can do to say that I'm moving and someone else is at rest or say that I'm the only one that can be at rest, someone else has to be moving. All of the laws of physics should be exactly the same for any inertially moving observer. There is no experiment that you can do to, to say otherwise. And that, that kind of uh, makes sense in a maybe a bit of a philosophical sense. I can fly on an airplane and, and throw a ball up and down and not really notice any difference as long as the plane's moving at a constant velocity. Just as I can do the same thing on the surface of the Earth, I can throw a ball up and down, even though the Earth is moving at 30 kilometers a second relative to the Sun. The second postulate is that the speed, the speed of light is independent of the speed of the source speed of the speed of the source which from from these experiments 
gains gains a lot of credibility that that might be a legitimate claim to make. So special relativity, even though it makes all of these weird predictions that there's there's time dilation and length contraction and, and all of these other weird effects that, that, uh, that come out of it, it's based on only two postulates, that there's no preferred reference frame and that the speed of light is independent of the speed of the source. And from those two fairly reasonable assumptions, all of these weird effects fall out of it. It's not like Einstein came out and said, all of these weird effects happen because I'm guessing they happened, so, so let's go and look for it. It comes from these two basic assumptions, and then we will see how these two assumptions lead to all of these weird effects, and we'll do that in, in the coming videos.